What's going on everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews back at it again with another hometown take. Today I'm talking about the Atlanta Hawks. You see the jerseys, you know the vibes. We get into our Atlanta Hawks and why the Atlanta Hawks will really be tested this month. And I'm going to give you a little preview of about four matchups the Hawks are facing this month. And that's what we're when we're really going to see what this Atlanta Hawks team is all about. But I'm still feeling good. It's not a negative video. It's a positive. And just a little heads up, I'm putting the Trey Young haters in shambles with a couple of stats. But before we do that, you know we got to handle some business. Make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, check out the first link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Hawks to some more wins starting tonight with the Philadelphia 76ers. They was looking for revenge last time we played up, but we're going to be looking for revenge tonight. We'll see what happens at home in State Farm Arena when the Hawks take on the 76ers. Also, check out the second link in my description box to buy me a coffee to fuel this chip. That's not the second link. The second link is actually to subscribe to the Tough Calls podcast with me and Gross Simone with Diz Fizzworth. Are talking to your favorite former and current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, all that good stuff. So listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, all that good stuff. And don't miss out on the good content. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. All right, guys, so the Hawks have been on a pretty good streak. They've won eight of their last nine and three in a row on the road. Obviously, we struggled on the road early with that five-game Western Conference road trip. It kind of put us back a little bit. But in games besides that, we're 12-5, and five and we're doing the do. Trey Young has been great the past couple of games. He's got five straight games of 30-plus points. He's up to fourth in the league in scoring with that. His last five games... 31.6 points per game, 8.8 .8 assists per game, been shooting 54.2% from the field, 46.1% from three, and the team is 4-1. and one. Now, Trey Young is always capable of going for 30 any night he really wants to, but it's that three-point field goal percentage that really stands out to me because I think that's really the next step for Trey Young. We know he can fill it up. We know he can score. Don't worry, I'm about to put the Trey Young haters in shambles in a second here. But it's his efficiency with the three-point shot now, and that bump up is what really has me excited. And we're going to need that for these next couple of games, especially really this whole month where we're not going to have Bogey Bogdanovich probably until about Christmas towards the end of the month. And Yeko Kongu probably won't be back again until Christmas towards the end of the month. Travis Schling told 92.9 in the game that both those guys probably going to come back around Christmas and DeAndre Hunter is going to be out a little bit longer. Probably won't expect him back until sometime in January. So we're going to need Trey Young to keep putting up these numbers. You know, keep <laughs> we're going to need a lot more Eastern Conference Player of the Week type performances from Trey Young in these next couple of weeks, in this next month overall. But let me put the Trey Young haters in shambles real quick while I'm thinking about it. Everybody has been talking about. You know, these national media pundits or whatever you want to call them. They've been talking about how, and just straight up haters, have been talking about Trey Young and how he won't be good, you know, with the new rules because he won't be able to get to the free throw line and he's lamb and lamb and lamb and lamb and lamb. Well, how about this? Trey Young's free throw attempt rate. Shout out to Mike Conti because I got this information from his tweet. 28-2019, again, these are his free throw attempt rates. 2018-2019, he went to the free, he attempted free throws 33% of the time, or 33% was his free throw attempt rate. 2019, 2020, 44%. Last year, 2020, 2021, 49%. 2021, 2022, this season, 28%. So down more than uh, 20% from last year to this year. And his percentage off points, off, his percentage off points, or his percentage of points, can't get my words right. Trey Young's percentage of points off free throws, 28-2019, 21% of his points came from the free throw line, 2019-2020, 27% of his points came from the free throw line, 2020-2021 last season, 30% of his points came from the free throw line. So, uh, and, you know, going up every year since, you know, he came into the league to, up until last year, but now, 2021-2022 season, only 19% of Trey Young's points are coming from the free throw line. And he's still what? 
he still what? Did you guys need to hear? Bro, Trey Young haters to watch right now. Do you, do you need to hear the, you know, his last five games against? Oh, his last five games, 31.6 points per game, 8.8 .8 assist point game, 54.2 of shooting percentage from the field, 46.1 three-point shooting percentage. The team is 4-1. They ain't empty stats either. The team's been winning. Okay? So, Trey Young haters, y'all gonna be in shambles now and go about your day. Thank you. Um, so, Trey Young has been great despite him not getting to the free throw line as much. Despite everybody saying his game was going to be, you know, taken away and he wasn't going to be as good. Yeah, y'all can stop with all that. That's nonsense. But Trey Young hasn't been the only person that has been great during this good stretch of games and, you know, nice wins and then being 8-9 um, for these last nine games. Kevin Herter, since coming in as a starter, has been great as well. Kevin Herter, a.k.a. Kayvon. AKA Red Velvet, AKA Kevin Don't Hurt Him, like some old sports always says. As a starter, the Hawks are 9 and 2, and he's averaged 13.3, 13.6, excuse me, points per game. He's been shooting 55.5% from the field, 49% from three, 3.4 rebounds, 2.8 assists per game. Kevin Hurt has been doing it all since the starter, and he just seems like one of those dudes that's better as a starter. He hasn't been off the bench this year. But as a starter, he's been phenomenal. So it'll be interesting to see how Nate McMillan handles that when Bogey comes back. Because usually Bogey is the starter at the shooting guard position. And Kevin comes off the bench to give us a little oomph. Well, off the bench, Kevin didn't really give us no oomph. But as a starter, he is. So it's going to be interesting to see how Nate McMillan handles that. But let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So the Hawks have been taking care of business, you know, these last couple stretch of games ever since the, you know, Western Conference road trip. We went on that seven game win streak and, you know, we've been doing our thing, getting us back up to over 500 where we stand now at 12 and 10. We haven't necessarily beaten any super good teams, though. We have beat the Bucks in that stretch, the Celtics and the Hornets. You know, the Hornets right now 13-11, good team, solid team. Celtics are 12 and 10, right behind us, good team, solid team. And the Bucks are defending champions, I believe, of the four seed right now. So we have been some good teams, but we, you can say we haven't necessarily been tested yet. Well, this month we're gonna be tested. Now we do have some gimme games. You know, we had the Timberwolves in there, the Magic a couple times, the Nuggets now without Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray, um, the Cavaliers without Colin Sexton, even though they still been kind of our, you know, Achilles heel for some reason. The point is, we've got some weaker teams, but we also have some big games this season where the Hawks are really going to be tested, and I think we're really going to see how they match up against, you know, potential playoff teams and teams that have a chance, you know, barring health and all that good stuff, that they could make a deep run. So, so in the month of December, obviously we got the 76ers tonight. We're going to play the Hornets again on Sunday. You know, we do have, you know, like I said, teams like the Timberwolves, the Rockets, the Magic, Cavaliers without Colin Sexton, teams that we should take care of, even the Nuggets without Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. I don't think he's back yet either. We do have teams that we, you know, should take care of. We should be, but we also have teams like the Brooklyn Nets a week from tonight. We got to take them on, and that's going to be a test for the Hawks, especially it's going to test our depth too. With we're not, Bogey's not going to be back yet. DeAndre Hunter obviously is not going to be back yet. Onyeko Kongu won't be back yet. How is our depth going to match up? How are we going to step up? How are we going to play against one of the top teams, not only in the East, but in the NBA? It's NBA Finals are um, really championship or bust for the Nets this season. How do we stack up against a team like that? So that's a week from tonight. Go on to later in the year as we end 2021, the 27th and the 29th, we take on the Bulls in back-to-back -back games. So um, that's Monday the 27th. We're, they're in State Farm Arena. We're taking them on at home, 7.30, taking on the Bulls. Then Wednesday in Chicago, taking on the Bulls again. How do we stack up in those two games? How are we going to handle a team like the Bulls, an elite team? Lonzo's been playing out of his mind with DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Alex Caruso's been playing well. How do we handle a team like that? How do we match up against a team like that? How will we do, you know, I don't know what the status of Bogey or Yaka Kung will be. Hopefully they'll be back by, by then. Travis Link has told 929 the game. He hopes, uh, you know, Bogey and Oyeka Kongu to be back by Christmas. But how do we stack up against an elite playoff team that could make a deep run of the playoffs? Those are two teams, the Nets and the Bulls, that are primed to make deep playoff runs. The 76ers still are no joke. I know they're still figuring some things out, but 
they blew us out, you know, they were, <laughs> they had that smooth revenge game against us, they was looking for revenge. How do we stack up against them tonight? And, you know, down the road later on in the month, these are going to be huge games for us. So, we need more Eastern Conference Player of the Week type performances from Trey Young. We need that same scoring output. We need Kevin, uh, Kayvon, Red Velvet. Kevin don't hurt him. We need to keep him that same, keep, have him keep that same energy that he's been keeping since he's become a starter. And the team has been 9-2 since he's been a starter. We need him to keep that same energy. We need Danilo Gallinari to be more consistent. We can't have those 2 for 11 from the field, 1 for 6 from three type nights like he had against the New York Knicks last game, or two games ago, I should say. We need him to be more consistent. DeLon Wright, when he comes in the game behind Trey Young, we can't have that big of a drop off. Yes, he has been playing better. Seems like he's getting more, you know, comfortable with the offense. And, he, you know, his, his numbers have been up a little bit, but we need him to be more consistent. We need him to drop some more numbers. We need Lou Williams. Lemon Pepper Lou, fourth quarter Lou. We need some more output from him. We just need more production from the bench now that our depth has depleted a little bit. We need guys to step up. We need Timothy Lawalu Cabrero even to step up because he's going to see some minutes. It's an important month for the Atlanta Hawks. Not only are we seeing how we match up against the more elite teams in the East, where this is a chance for us when we take on the Timberwolves, when we take on the Rockets, when we take on the Cavs without Colin Sexton, when we take on the Magic, these are chances for us to get wins, rise up in the Eastern Conference standings because this is a year that I think we need to be a four seed. We need to go ahead and show, hey, we can get it done in the regular season and the playoffs. We can get um, home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. We can do what we did last year. We can do it again. Last year wasn't a fluke. This is that year to show that. So this is an important month to set the, set the Hawks up for success down the road later on in the season. Obviously, there's a long way to go, but... I just think this is a really important month for the Hawks, not only to get their wins up against the teams they should be, because we are taking on some lesser teams, but to also see how we match up against the elite teams in the East. So guys, make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts. What do you think about the Hawks month of December and the games? How do you think they're going to stack up against the more elite teams? I think they'll stack up well. I think they'll be fine. They haven't been blown out this season. I mean, the times they've been blown out, three of the Four big losses from the Hawks came on that Western Conference road trip. We lost by 14 to the Warriors, 18 to the Jazz, 12 to the Jazz again. Lost by 11 to the Wizards, 28 to the 76ers. Those are all of our double-digit losses. So we only have, what, one, two, three, four, five double-digit losses out of the 10 losses that we have this season. The Hawks are a good team. We don't get blown out. We stay competitive. And like I said, this is just a big month for us. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you, how you think the Hawks are going to match up the more elite teams in the East. How do you think, how important do you think the month of December is for the Hawks? you think it's important, not so important, or not important at all? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Check out the first link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Hawks to a whole bunch of wins in December because I think they're important. Also, check out the second link in my description box to subscribe to the Tough Cause podcast. Me and yours are only the Spizzlers. Until I talk to you guys next time, stay true to Atlanta. Believe in Atlanta. Peace.